Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and those of you who are here for the first time a great big welcome to you. Today my friends we are gonna go country. I'm gonna share with you a traditional country food keto style. Today we are going to learn how to make quick easy chicken pot pie with a keto twist. This is so good and so easy anybody can make it. And if you want a printable version of this, you can check out my website at JanetsDeliciousLowCarbKitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click that notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out a new video. And if you'd like to help to support the channel, make sure you scroll down into the description of this video. You'll see some Amazon affiliate links. Anytime you click that link and purchase anything using my affiliate link, a small portion will go to me, which will help to support the channel. Even if you don't want the item it routes you to, you just go up to that Amazon search bar, type in whatever you want to buy, and whatever you purchase, as long as you're using my affiliate link, a portion will go to me, which will help to support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Lightly spray a 9 inch pie plate with cooking spray. In a large mixing bowl, combine a half cup of milk of your choice and a half cup of sour cream. Whisk these both together until they're fully combined and smooth. Add a half teaspoon of garlic powder a half teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of black pepper, a half teaspoon of ground coriander seeds or any type of dried herb you want, a half teaspoon of dry thyme, and a half teaspoon of paprika. Whisk these all together until everything is fully combined and your sauce is smooth. Add one cup of canned or frozen or cooked mixed vegetables. If you do use frozen, make sure they are thawed and drained before you fold them in. Fold it in until it's fully coated with the sauce. Add one cup of cooked shredded chicken and gently fold it in until it's fully coated with the sauce. Then add another two-thirds cup of cooked mixed vegetables. You can either use canned or frozen. Again, if you use frozen, make sure it's thawed and drained. Fold them in until they're fully combined. Add another one cup of cooked shredded chicken. And again, fold it in until it's fully coated. Sprinkle in one teaspoon of almond flour. Then stir it until it's fully distributed in the mixture. Then again, sprinkle in another teaspoon of almond flour and again, mix it in really well so it's fully combined with all the meat and vegetables. Then one more time, add another teaspoon of almond flour and stir it in until it's fully combined and fully distributed with the mixture. The almond flour is just going to give the sauce a little bit of texture so it's not a watery sauce once it's baked. Once the filling's all mixed together, then set it aside. Then in a large mixer bowl, combine 3 4th cup of coconut flour, a half teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of xanthan gum. Yes, you need this. This helps bind the crust together. One teaspoon of garlic powder and one teaspoon of onion powder. Whisk these together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the coconut flour. Now the garlic powder and the onion powder are both optional. You don't have to put them in, but they really add to the flavor of the pot pie. So if you don't want them in, you don't have to put them in but I always like flavor, so I add flavor wherever I can. Once the dry ingredients are all whisked really well, 
Then add six large eggs and beat on low for about 10 seconds or just to moisten the dry ingredients. Then increase your speed to medium and beat on medium for about 30 seconds or until everything is combined and smooth. Now if you want to, you can do this with a hand mixer or with just a regular hand whisk. It's up to you. Scrape down the sides of your bowl and push all your ingredients to the center of the bowl. Then add a half cup of oil of your choice. I'm using canola oil, you can use any oil you want. Then beat it on medium for another 30 seconds or until it's fully combined and your batter is completely smooth. And again, you can just whisk this in by hand if you want to. It's up to you how you want to do it. Just make sure it is very smooth. Then once again, scrape down the sides of the bowl and push all of the ingredients to the center of the bowl. Scoop out about a half cup of the batter and spread it across the bottom of your prepared pie pan. Use a knife or a spatula and make sure it is nice and even down at the bottom. You don't want a bumpy bottom. <laughs> you want the bottom of your pie to be nice and smooth. Once the bottom of the crust is smooth, take the bowl that has your filling, give it a little bit of a stir to make sure that everything still is all fully incorporated together. Then gradually pour the filling over the bottom crust and smooth it out so it's evenly filling the entire pan. Use a spoon or a fork and flatten down the top of the filling so you have a nice even layer across the top. Take your remaining batter and scoop it out by tablespoonfuls across the top of your pie. Then use a knife or a spatula and spread the batter out across the entire top of the filling so that the filling is completely covered and there are no holes or gaps inside of the top layer of crust. Make sure you keep it as smooth and as even as possible. You want it to cook evenly, so try to make it as even as possible. Once it's nice and smooth, then put the pie in your preheated oven and bake for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the top of the pie is starting to turn golden around the edges. Mine took about 20, 21 minutes, somewhere around in there to get the perfect texture I was looking for. But again, as I always say, everybody's oven is different. So 20 to 25 minutes, you're looking for it to be golden around the edges. Once it's done baking, remove it from the oven and let it cool in the pan for about 15 minutes so that all the flavors can set in and the crust can firm up a bit. Once it's done cooling, then cut your desired slice, put it on a plate, and eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to, let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make, and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking!